Hello, hello, hello! Today we are going for a ride. Um, no gum put this morning. I found some old shoes. I'll be fine. The weather here in the valley changes all the time, so we have a sun, but there is some dark clouds over there. And uh, it rains, it doesn't rain, it rains, it doesn't rain, so it doesn't matter. So um, we're gonna go for a little wander up the valley and I'll hopefully show you a couple places. Uh, get this beast woken up. Tie this stuff up. They should be okay for petrol. Um, yeah, found some uh, kind of lead old leather jacket. Uh, so my at least put that on. And um, yeah, let's see. Let's go riding. <laughs> Nothing like borrowed gear. <laughs> Nothing fits proper. But that's okay. Gates okay, open. Let's do it. We are in middle of Slovakia, right smack bang in the middle, in the beautiful hills all around. And I have taken you out for a little trip to, um, it's a place called Koritnica. Um, this place, it's kind of famous because it used to be a uh, the final stop on uh, on a little tramway would came only this way, had a, like a narrow rail, two or three carriages, and uh, there is lots of stories from my parents about it, and uh, especially my dad, who were mischievous youths, because, for example, there is a slight climb all the way up, and they wanted to, uh, the train person gave them a little bit of a ear clipping for not having tickets. So one day they cycled up here and they used bacon. Like a big, big, you can buy a big slab of bacon, something like pancetta. And they uh, rubbed it on the rails. And then when the, the track came over, supposedly the wheels start slipping and they couldn't get up here. So that's a, one of the silly stories my dad told me. Um, this place we're gonna get up to is a, um, used to be a um, spa, hell spa during commies. It was people you could get a uh, 
paperwork or you could be sent here to uh, drink that is all this region is full of mineral waters and uh, I'll show you around and uh, you could go there breathe the beautiful mountain air drink mineral waters and then two weeks later you've gone home as a brand new person so um, maybe some brainwashing um, but yeah um, now it's been in disrepair for a very long time it has been built maybe 10 15 years ago maybe even 20 years ago people tried to save it and make something of it but since then it was just falling apart so um, we probably see lots of ruins up there uh, yeah it is what it is that's what happens here but um, yeah let's check it out let's go uphill and see if we can have a drink of some solid mineral water you can see all the iron deposits everywhere okay let's go up there As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful around here. Some of these houses are for sale. There used to be a nice park, it's all overgrown. Uh, you could see some apartment blocks down there, people still live here. And uh, there were two barricades, you can see one over there and one we will go through, it's right there. They used to be closed and no entry. Now, as you can see, it's all open. And um, that's it. The buildings that are back there, it's also overgrown, nothing's visible, but we have a little ride around and see what we can come up with. Uh, yeah, let's have a look. Church is the most important thing in Slovakia, so uh, or at least used to be, so that's gonna be cleared up and always visible. And you can see some buildings start poking up there. So let's have a look. As you can see, people still come here, get their water supplies to take home. Hey. So um, there is a bunch of different springs. This is uh, Joseph in this little hut. Uh, that one is Jofia, like a Sophie. And up there it's Anton. So we can have a little look around and I'll show you inside if we can get in. And this was, uh, used to be absolutely stunning. Looked after people come here and uh, relax. There is a lots of good hiking around here. It's absolutely beautiful. Me and my family, we would come here every single week with uh, jars and jars and containers to fill the waters for us. Let's have a look inside. This is the Sophie Spring. You can smell the sulfur and iron and uh, you can see all the deposits. Man, it's naturally sparkly. <laughs> Man, it's so cool when you have the bubbles straight from the stream. Okay. And now you can see the bubbles. <sighs> so good. I missed it. In New Zealand, the water is very different, so this is my home. My body is just like, oh. Just had a little sip of Anton, and um, every spring has a very different flavor. Some this is much more sulfuric. Um, yeah, so many people uh, prefer one flavor or another, and this water just keeps going. There is no stopping it. There is no button. There is no tap. It just keeps going. I came here first when I was probably in my nappies. And now I'm 42 and the water just keeps running. So there was a time where there were companies and uh, bottled it and sold it. Even during communism it was still a massive, that big building down there we'll have a look at. It was a big uh, 
um, factory for water. My grandma used to buy water Koritnica. And um, then uh, it went to private hands and they kind of bankrupted it all up and destroyed stuff. So that didn't really work. So now the whole place is just, I don't know if it's privately owned or who does it, but yeah, it's, as you can see, it's in shambles. Uh, nevertheless, it's still beautiful. There is a leftover of the little walkways and which was once a perfect tower to the more buildings over there. We'll have a look around. And this is the Joseph. Blue. People here are more conservative, so they keep staring at the tattooed dude on a motorbike with piercings and hair. But hey, it is what it is, eh? You see, this is one of those old buildings. Every na every building had its name. Uh, and down here, this was the factory where they uh, bottled the water. So it's all kind of spooky. Um, the nature is reclaiming the building back. You can see through the hole that it's all falling apart. There are all different rooms, all the boxing stuff. I think the, the filling company, they store there all the covers and things. Stairs. Hopefully the, the stairs don't fall out with me. Anybody home? Just foxes and doves and pigeons. Oh, this is a bit dicey. Oh, there's a wall missing here. This is just one of the buildings, one of many. There is maybe 10 different buildings for different purposes. Some was for healing, some had doctors, some uh, were just relaxing, some was accommodation. Yes, we always hope that uh, somebody will uh, make this a beautiful area for people to come and enjoy, especially with the privatization when uh, people thought that um, with being in the European everything changes and uh, we're gonna have a hordes of tourists trying to enjoy our nature, our beautiful nature. And uh, yeah, so some people invested money some into buildings, accommodations, restaurants, and then uh, no one came. Euro came, corporations came, big manufacturing came, and um, no tourists. So all the tourist spots just died and disappeared. So you end up with this, just desolate, beautiful spots. And I guess if you, you know, if you've never seen it, you don't care, but uh, if you've seen this in the heyday, and like uh, I'll show you a picture of somebody painted I think what it what it used to look like you can just get an idea of these beautiful buildings perched in trees and this is another another spring down here let's have a sip of this one what's what's your name little spring um, and how do you taste Mm, less sparkly again. It's called Wojciech. Mm, 
they, this one doesn't have any sparkle. Still kind of irony. It's almost like you drink your own blood. <laughs> have you ever done it? I quite like it when you chop it. Maybe I'm a vampire. Hey, uh, let's have a walk this little alleyway and uh, see what's up there. This over here was a big memorial, big park for, I'm not sure, this area was a uh, uh, it was called Slovak National Uprising and all this area from my hometown until here was full of guerrillas fighting Nazis during the Second World War so uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, these memorials it says that the um, uh, let's give a oh man I don't know how to translate it yeah, like an Anzac thing in New Zealand but for our our soldiers are not even soldiers it's just for anybody who uh, decided to step against the Nazis and most people who fought here were not military they were just your regular mom and dad granddad they didn't like what's happening so they uh, uh, went away from home hid in the mountains managed to snatch some weapons and for the Nazis and uh, this is not, not like a strategic area from an economic point of view but more from movement because this road we travel on it's your kind of main vein between east and west because everything else is kind of impenetrable forests so uh, it was kind of crucial to go and the city where we were uh, that's your um, uh, north to north to south and east to west so Yes, this road is south to east, and as you see, there is so many trucks, so many so many uh, cars goes everywhere, and uh, that's why the road is so busy. But uh, on the positive, the bus from Budapest we took goes this way because they go all the way to Warsaw to Poland. So I was able to hop off um, in my hometown. So um, yeah. Anyway, back to the story. This was a very crucial strategic movement area. So. There was lots of Nazis flooding through, so uh, the regular folk ran away from home and fought them. And uh, that's how my great grandfather died, actually, because uh, because of the uh, guerrillas in the area, they uh, the Nazis uh, put up a curfew, so you couldn't be out from six to six or something along those way. And supposedly, and we had no gates, no fences in those days around houses. But and everybody had uh, long drops, your outhouses for loot. And supposedly, my uh, great grandfather went to have a poop early in the morning. And uh, right then and there, the um, Nazi patrol, SS patrol, was going by through the village, and they saw him up out and uh, thought that he is a. Uh, uh, guerrilla so they shot him he got a bullet in his belly and in those days there were no doctors no nobody to help so he died three days later from bleeding out in his abdomen so pretty rough going yesterday we went to the cemetery and I saw my mom's brother he died as a one-year-old in 1945 the child mortality rate was massive there was a Almost 80% kids died because of malnutrition and no food and no doctors. It was a pretty rough time. You know, I know that without military, nothing would happen, but the amount of casualties, like a civilian casualties and civilian people who fought uh, for themselves, you know, nobody kind of seems to think about that. Um, yeah, so that's just my take on it, my, my experience. Well, we got very deep and very dark really quickly, haven't we, with the conversation? <laughs> All right, let's jump on a bike and have a look at a uh, different area before I keep boring you with the uh, crazy stories from central Slovakia, from the mountains. All right.
Let's have another sip of the water and go. Alright, we're just gonna pop up onto the top of the mountain pass to see all the ski fields and then we head back. Another yeah, bad little spin around. So let's go have a look. Well, this area it's called Dona Valley. It's uh, uh, one of the largest um, ski fields in the. You go all up the mountains. There are ski fields as you were, as you saw were coming down. Ski fields on this side, all around us. Um, our old school heritage buildings are all these log house, old school wooden log house. These days they are all um, they are all restaurants and you can see they are everywhere. One is there, one is there. To us it's kind of normal. Everything is solid wood, rustic. Uh, yeah, they do lots of festivals, summer, winter festivals. Up around, we used to come here and party and drink and, and do fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, never been here as a tourist, to be honest, to stay and ski. I was doing actually... Um, I don't know if you'll see on uh, just behind this building that it was a kind of shallow area. I used to be a snowboarding instructor there one season. So, yeah, I was here as a worker, if anything, and, uh, and a couple of music festivals up here in the middle of winter on the snow, which was fun. This is a brewery that's brand new. I never seen that before. I wonder if we can go and climb up some of the little slopes, but uh, maybe I'll leave it for another day. Alright, so this is it. This is a little bit of a Slovakia for you. Um, I don't know if I will have more time to go riding. We have a quite a bit of a full program, but at least a little bit. At least uh, one little ride, even if it is just one we do. I should uh, clean up the bike before we go. I'm carrying a bunch of hay with me. Well, you know, you're gonna take it off-road when you can, eh? even if the tires are not proper off-roading, but that's fine. Okay. I'm just gonna head back and uh, yeah, I'll see you at home. Enjoy the ride! Peace.